Next up, this is interesting because uh, the presidential election has been called for Joe Biden. Now, we're not going to see him actually step in until 2021. And we have to go through the legal process because President Trump believes that there was massive voter fraud. So they have to go through their due diligence and go to the court. So uh, we will see. Maybe it'll be Biden. Maybe Trump will be there. I don't know what's going to happen. But we have to make our plans now. It does not matter who is in the office. We must make plans and we must prepare. It is better to be proactive than reactive because nobody likes to be sitting on their hands and get sideswiped. So let's just go with the Biden thing. Let's just talk it out. So would Bitcoin and crypto benefit from a Biden administration? It's a great question. And of course, the person who asked this question is Laura Shin over at Unchained. Fantastic journalist and really good interviewer, smart lady. And she had on Kristen Smith, who's the director of the Blockchain Association and board member of the Political Action Committee, HODL PAC. And she states, as we look to the Biden administration, if that is what we're going to deal with, which I think they are, I actually think the combination of a Biden administration with a Republican Senate, which I think is where we're going, that it's really good for crypto, and there are a couple of reasons for that. And I'm like, well, first of all, it's I don't I never thought it was good to have a democrat a democratic president and then a Republican Senate or vice versa, because there's always gonna be a bunch of gridlock. However, hopefully, uh, they can reach across the aisle and actually work together. I have no faith in that, but let's just dream, shall we? She states that the Trump administration had its benefits, a Biden administration could act as a blank slate for crypto lobbyists and proponents, or kind of like a big reset. Let's just reset and start from scratch. She said this Trump administration is a little bit mixed. We had Hester Pierce, Brian Quintanis, and they're great. Hester Pierce, of course, is crypto mom for the SEC, one of the commissioners. But we also have Secretary Mnuchin, or Steven, Steven Mnuchin, who is not a big fan of crypto. We have Trump himself, who has said uh, on a couple of tweets, he's not a fan of crypto uh, as well. Also, Jay Clayton has been quite the big skeptic. Jay Clayton is the head of the SEC, and it's, he's like not a fan whatsoever. And they've been standing in the way of getting something done, which is usually a problem with certain individuals who can't see the light of day. So as we look to the Biden administration, we're hoping to get crypto educated regulators in key positions at the SEC, the CFTC, the OCC, and every other place that we can get them in there. And she said, so Biden will play an important role in picking who those people are. Combine the scenario with a more moderate and business friendly Republican Senate, Smith says crypto related regulation could flourish. And that's the thing. I didn't really think about that way. That's true. So if you have a Democratic president, and they're sometimes not so much pro-business and Republicans they state are. I mean, whatever. I really, it, really, this is what it comes down to. It comes down to the person. Because there are Democrats on one side that are sh truly pro-crypto. And there are some re uh, Republicans who are like the exact opposite and vice versa. So it really comes down to the person and how well educated they are in the space, which is the exact same reason why I created this website to educate people and why I made it 100% free. Because the more educated people that we have in this space, the more they will get into it, the more they will be an intelligent investor. And an intelligent investor is a happy investor. So to finish up, I think that's good for crypto because the support we've had from Democrats tends to be from those that are a little bit more open to business, a little bit more open to private sector innovation. And I think that's actually a winning combo. And that makes sense. So I'm going to link this uh, this interview. Fantastic! I've only watched a very small snippet of it uh, in the uh, description. You can check it out. But this leads me to my next point because we have to be prepared because Biden will probably be the next president of the United States. Let's just call a spade a spade. And if that's the case, then you have to look at what his tax plan potentially is in the future. And this is something that we talked about two weeks ago. Maybe it was even less than that. And this was from the taxfoundation.org. They took a look at what his tax plan is. So I'm just going to repeat the exact same thing I said a couple of weeks ago. So here's what I said. Whoever you're going to vote for, I'm. this is not a political channel. <laughs> I'm not here to change the world. I'm here to make a profit. <laughs> That's it. So this was just interesting to me because of these are tax proposals. Now, will this go into effect? Well, I mean, maybe if Joe Biden gets elected, sure, that could happen. Or he also has to pass this through the House and the Senate, you know, Congress. So, you know, chances of that, who knows? But these are the things, this is the vision for a specific party, okay? Not that this is right or wrong, but this is just what it is. And you have to start thinking about this right now 
Because if you believe, like I believe, that digital assets are going to go to the moon over the next three, five years, what are you going to do when you are sitting on a million dollars or a million in cryptocurrency and you're like, okay, I need to pay some bills. How do I take this out? Well, now we're talking about capital gains tax, not only in the federal part, but the state part. And I got to do all these different things as far as like my income and any taxes and taxes and taxes. What do I do? Well, right now it's not too bad, but here's what could potentially come on the pipe. So former Vice President Joe Biden enacted a number of policies that would raise taxes, include individual income taxes and payroll taxes on high income individuals with incomes above 400,000. That doesn't seem like much now, but I'm gonna just imagine this. It's 2016, you bought Ethereum at $10 and you bought, or you bought a thousand, right? So you have a thousand Ethereum. Well, what happens when it goes from $10 Ethereum, which was in 2016, all the way up to, oh, I don't know, $1,400 in 2017. And you wanna cash out. Well, guess what, this 400,000, it doesn't seem that much now, does it? So as time goes on, you have to understand, you might make a lot of money. And if you make a lot of money, this number that you think is unobtainable all of a sudden becomes the norm. And now you're like, well, wait, well, how much I got to pay in that? Well, if you're sitting on a tax bracket, I don't, I don't know, it might be 28%, 32%, 30, I forgot, 34%. Let's just say a third, a third. So a third of everything that you have now has to go to the government. And I don't know where you're at in the world. This is just for America. But I can tell you right now that taxes around the globe vary greatly. And there are some states that just are some states, some countries that just are awful and some that are pretty good. But we have to start thinking about these things now as opposed to paying the piper later on. So Biden's plan to raise taxes roughly by 3.8 trillion over the next decade on a conventional basis. 3.8 trillion, which is, you know, a good amount of what we printed from nothing. On a conventional basis, the Biden tax plan would lead to 7.8% less after-tax income for the top 1% taxpayers. Okay, so if you're a Jeff Bezos, hey, 7.8% less. Think you'll be okay. 1.1% lower after-tax for the top five and 0.6% for the other income quintiles. Nice word. All right, so moving down, moving down. This is the interesting part. Taxes long-term, capital gains, and qualified dividends at the ordinary income tax rate of 39.6% on income above 1 million. Again, that may seem out of reach right now, but as time goes on, this might be the norm for you. I don't know. Lastly, it states, increasing the corporate tax rate 28% would account for the largest revenue gain which is 1.3 trillion over 10 years in the plan. So that's corporate taxes, right? Mm -hmm. Lastly, higher taxes levied on taxpayers earning more than 400,000, that could be you, including higher tax rates on ordinary income, as well as capital gains and dividends would raise another 1.2 trillion over 10 years. So again, plan now for what's gonna happen later because there is nothing worse than being caught short with a ton of money. And you're like, ah, now I got to give away 33% or 25% or I mean, heck, even 20% is a lot. So if you have time, I'm going to link this at the very end of this video. It's how I am not going to pay any crypto taxes moving forward. And I talk about how I do it, the plan that I do it and how I do it legally. And that's the most important part. And all right, so that's it for today. So again, I want to remind you that the website is open 100% free check out at your leisure all you gotta do is you can you can check out the front page a lot of great information if you want to but the meat and potatoes really is right here under start learning so go ahead and sign up and i really appreciate it thank you so much just remember the the criteria just tell a couple people and that's really all i ask for all right thanks for watching appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one